Hello, dear students. This is your engineering mathematics three lecture. Today's topic is two-dimensional heat equation. This topic is from six unit applications of partial differential equation. This is one of the application of partial differential equation, two-dimensional heat equation. In previous lecture, we have discussed wave equation and one-dimensional heat equation. Now. Two dimensional heat equation. Consider the flow of heat in a metal plate in XY plane. If the temperature at a point does not depend upon the upon Z coordinate and it depends only on X, Y, and T, then the flow is called the is called two dimensional and the heat flow lies in X, Y plane only and is zero along the Z axis. See the concept of two dimensional heat equation. Consider the flow of heat in a metal plate in X, Y plane. If the temperature at a point does not depend upon the Z coordinate and it depends only on X and Y and T, then the flow is called two dimensional and the heat flow lies in X, Y plane only and is zero along the Z axis. Okay. Now, two dimensional heat equation, it is given by del square U by del X square plus del square U by del Y square is equal to zero. You uh, function of X and Y. Because that plate is in plane, so there are two. Um, it is in x y plane, x y plane. And so this is the two dimensional heat equation. Del square u by del x square plus del square u by del y square is equal to zero. It is also called Laplace equation. Okay. Now the solution of two dimensional heat flow equation. There are two uh, conditions. When one of the condition is u is equal to zero. Use function value u is zero. Use function of two variables x and y. U is zero for y tends to infinity for all x between zero to l. When the value of x is in between zero to l and the value of y tends to infinity, that is your u function will be u x comma infinity. That y tends to infinity when x is in between zero to l. Then function value is zero for all x in zero comma l. Then the most suitable solution is u x y is equal to c one cos m x plus c two sin m x. In another bracket, c three e raised to m y plus c four e raised to minus m y. The second is when one of the condition is u is equal to zero for x tends to infinity for all y between zero to l. That is when x tends to infinity and y the value of y is in between zero to l. Then the most suitable solution is u of x y is equal to c one e raised to m x plus c two e raised to minus m x in another bracket c three cos m y plus c four sin m y. Okay, this first one is c one e raised to m x plus c two e raised to minus m x. Okay, so these are the two um, solutions for two uh, different conditions. Now we are going to discuss here the example that. An infinitely long uniform metal plate is enclosed between lines y is equal to zero and y is equal to l. Means the length of plate is given zero to l. Y is varying from zero to l. For x greater than zero, the temperature is zero along the edges. Y is equal to zero to y is equal to l. And at infinity, if the edge x is equal to zero is kept at a constant temperature u naught, find the temperature distribution u of x y. Very the theoretical example is here. Uh, infinite, infinitely long uniform metal plate is enclosed. See the diagram between lines. Y is equal to zero. To y is equal to L. Uh, for x greater than zero, the temperature is zero along the edges. Y is equal to zero. To y is equal to L. And at infinity, if the edge x is equal to zero is kept at a constant temperature, you know. U is equal to u naught when x is zero. Find the temperature distribution u of x y. U of x y. Now here the word metal plate is used, so it is the example of two-dimensional heat equation. And you know the two-dimensional heat equation. It is uh, del square u by del x square plus del square u by del y square is equal to zero. So you write down here in solution the equation, and you draw this diagram of plate. Y is zero to y is equal to the y varies from zero to x is equal to zero to x tends to infinity. 
okay when x is zero the function value u is equal to u naught remember it now the, you write down the boundary condition that no, conditions are not given but we can write the boundary condition the value of y is varying from 0 to l so when x sorry x is in between x as it is y is in between 0 to l initially when x oh, sorry when y is equal to 0 the condition is u of x comma 0 is 0 second when u of x the value of y is l because the uh, plate length is 0 to l u of x comma l is equal to 0 these are the two boundary conditions third one is when x tends to infinity because x is varying from 0 to infinity so when u of infinity comma y the function value is again 0 and fourth one is u of when x the value of x is 0 y is in between 0 to l the function value is u naught since we are writing here four conditions two boundary conditions for y two boundary conditions for x first two boundary conditions are for y so the value of x is as it is and the value of y is 0 to l for both the function values are 0 third one and fourth one the third fourth are conditions boundary conditions for x x is going from 0 to infinity when uh, x is infinity the function value is again 0 u is 0 and when x is 0 the function value is u 0 which is given the example u naught okay and the value of y is in between 0 to l now since the plate extends to infinity along x axis the solution of equation is given by when the value of x is infinity, it goes to infinity. What is the most suitable solution? See, the second solution is the most suitable because when one of the condition is u is 0 for x tends to infinity, then uh, the most suitable solution is here. u of x, y is equal to c1 e raised to mx plus c2 e raised to minus mx. Another bracket c3 cos mi plus c4 sin mi. This is the most suitable solution. So, write down the most suitable solution here. Since the plate extends to infinity along its axis, the solution uh, of equation one is uh, here. Solution of what is equation one? Equation one is that uh, Laplace equation of uh, two dimensional heat equation. Okay. So the most suitable solution when x tends to infinity is u of x y is equal to c1 e raised to mx plus c2 e raised to m minus mx. Another bracket c3 cos m i plus c4 sin m. Okay. This is equation four. Now, using these four conditions, we are going to remove the arbitrary constant C1, C2, C3, C4, one by one, applying the conditions. Now, apply condition one. See, what is the first condition? U of x comma zero is zero. Means you put y is equal to zero, then the function value u is also zero. Put in equation two, y is equal to zero. So, u of x comma zero is equal to now y is 0, so first term uh, it is free from y, so it will be as it is. C1 e raised to mx plus C2 e raised to minus mx. What about the second uh, uh, that second bracket term? It contains y and the value of y is 0. Cos 0 is 1, so C3 into 1 is C3 plus C4 into sine 0 because y is 0, sine 0 is 0. So this uh, second term, the second bracket term, the second term is 0. So there is only C3 into 1, C3. So the term is u of x uh, comma 0 x value is 0. So you write in LX is 0, 0 is equal to C3 into <clears throat> C1 e raised to mx plus C2 e raised to minus mx. Now this product is 0 means at least one of them is 0. That's why the product is 0. So can we say C3 is 0? See equation number 2. This is the most suitable solution. Can we write C3 0? If C3 is 0, then the remaining term comes will be non-zero as it is. So uh, there, there is possibility that C3 may be 0. C3. So we cannot say this complete bracket term is 0. Because if it is 0, and if we put the value in equation number 2, then the complete solution will be 0. So this is not possible, that bracket term is 0. Only we can say C3 is 0. So after applying condition 1, C3 is 0. C3 is 0, so put in equation 2, C3 is equal to 0. So your latest solution is after applying condition is u of x y is equal to c3 0 c1 e raised to mx plus c2 e raised to minus mx in another bracket c3 0 so only non zero term is c4 into sin m1 this is your equation number three this is your equation number three now apply condition two equation number three is your latest solution after applying condition one now apply condition two what is second condition 
u of x comma l is equal to zero. Then the value of y is l. The function value is also zero. Now the latest solution is equation number three. There you put y is equal to l. So u of x comma l is equal to c one e raised to m x plus c two e raised to minus m x because the change is in variable y. We are replacing y by l. The first term contains the uh, it is free from y, so it will be as it is. Now then c four as it is sin m l in place of y where uh, in l. So c four sin m l. And the value of this function u of x comma l is zero by second condition. So put L in L is zero. Now this product is zero. See, c one e raised to m x plus c two e raised to minus m x bracket complete into c four into sine m l is equal to zero. Now this term is zero. It means at least one of them is zero. That's why the product is zero. So can we say this first term bracket term is zero? C one e raised to m x plus c two e raised to minus m x. It is not zero. Because if it is zero, then what will happen in equation number three? If you put it is equal to zero, the complete solution will be zero. This is not possible. So this bracket term is not zero. Can we say C four is zero? If you put C four is equal to zero in equation number three, zero into the remaining term will be zero. So your solution will be zero. So this is also not possible that C four is zero. The only possibility is that sine m l is zero. The sine function may be zero for some value m l. So here sine m l is equal to zero. Now we know that sine n pi is equal to zero. Okay, sine n pi is zero, and here sine m l is zero. So uh, m l is equal to n pi. You can say m l is equal to n pi, where n varies from one to three, and so on. So m is equal to n pi upon n. This is the value of m. So after uh, applying second condition, we have m is equal to n pi upon n, and the latest solution is equation number three. So put m is equal to n pi upon n in equation number three. So that you will get your new solution. So u of x y is equal to c one e raised to n pi x upon l plus c two e raised to minus n pi x upon l bracket complete into c two sin n pi y upon l. This is your latest solution. Equation number four. Now apply condition three. So what is condition three? U of infinity comma y is equal to zero. Means put x is equal to infinity. If x is equal to infinity, we we'll put in equation number four. What will happen? U of infinity comma y is equal to c one e raised to infinity plus c two e raised to minus infinity bracket complete into c four into sine of n pi y upon l sine of n pi y upon l. Okay. Now e raised to infinity is infinity. So c one into e raised to infinity infinity. So first term will be infinity. What about second? C two e raised to minus infinity. E raised to minus infinity is zero, so this term will be zero. Second, right in bracket, second term is zero, and the remaining terms here as it is because they are free from x. Now in bracket, the second term is zero, and first term is infinity. We don't know the value of infinity. So if C one is zero, then what will happen? Zero into the uh, into infinity will be zero. So it is uh, the solution of this term that C one must be zero here. Then and then we have the finite answer. So here we have to assume because u infinity y value is zero. It is given in the condition. So zero is equal to. It is zero only when this C one is zero. Otherwise, e raised to infinity is infinity, and so u zero is equal to infinity. This is absurd result. And so C one is zero here in this case. So right here C one is zero. Now after applying condition three, we have C one is equal to zero. So put C one is equal to zero in equation number four. Put in equation number four. So we'll get the latest solution. It is U of x y is equal to C one is zero first term zero. C two e raised to minus n pi x upon l into C four sine n pi y upon l. This is the answer. Later solution. Okay, after applying third condition. <clears throat> Now C two into C four. C two is arbitrary constant. C four is arbitrary constant. So C two into C four is again a new constant. It is C five. So U of x y is equal to C five into e to minus n pi x upon l into sine of n pi y upon l. So this is equation number five. This is equation number five. Okay. Where C five is the arbitrary constant. Now, 
here n is, is varying from 1 to 3 and so on. Now n is equal to 1 to 3 and varying C5 uh, as B1, B2, B3. So its general solution we can uh, replace this C5 by Bn. U of xy is equal to summation Bn e raised to minus n pi x upon n into sine of n pi y upon n and varies from 1 to infinity. This is the latest solution here, equation number 6. Okay. <coughs> now, our aim is uh, find the value of Bn. Now, here you apply condition 4. So, what is the condition 4? Four? 4 condition. Here we have written all the conditions. 1, 2, 3, 4. We are applying one by one. Now, the fourth condition is u of 0, comma y is equal to u0. Means you put x is equal to 0 and the function value will be u0, where y is in between 0 to l. Okay. So, here, yeah, apply condition where put x is equal to 0 in equation number 6. So, u of 0, comma y is equal to summation b n sin n pi y upon l. Because we are putting x is equal to 0, e raised to 0, exponential function contains x, and if you put x is equal to 0, e raised to 0 is 1. So this one, its value, exponential function value, term is 1. So it is only bn into sine of n pi y upon l, and u of 0, comma y, its value is u naught. So u naught is equal to summation bn sine n pi y upon l, n varies from 1 to infinity, which is nothing but Fourier half range sine series for u of 0, comma y is equal to u0 in 0 to l. Okay, now where bn is equal to how to find the value of bn is equal to 2 upon l integration over 0 to l f of y into sin n pi y upon l into dy. Okay, so because uh, here the value of x is 0 and the value of y is in between 0 to l. So your function will be in terms of y. So f of y into sin n pi y upon l into dy. What is f of y? It is here u of 0, comma y, it is equal to u naught. So f of y is u naught sin n pi y upon l into d y. Now you uh, know u naught is constant term. So 2 into u naught upon l constant. Integrate sine function. So integration of sine function is minus cos n pi y upon l upon n pi upon n. And the limit is 0 to l. Okay. So 2 u naught upon l. Okay. Now the upper limit is l. So put y is equal to l. So it is minus cos n pi l upon l. L upon l will get cancelled. It is cos n pi minus cos n pi. Here it is minus cos n pi. And the denominator term is n pi upon l. And we can write this term as l upon n pi. So this is the first term after putting upper limit l. The lower limit is 0. So minus sign for lower limit. And already minus sign is there. So minus minus plus. Lower limit is 0. So put y is equal to 0. First 0 is 1. So 1 upon n pi upon l is l upon n pi. Okay. Now 2 u naught upon l into l upon n pi is common for both the terms. So you take it common l upon n pi. 2 u naught upon l is constant. In bracket, now l upon n pi is common. So in bracket remaining term is minus cos n pi. Cos n pi its value is minus 1 raised to n. So minus in bracket minus 1 raised to n plus 1. So rearrange the terms. They are in the term 2 u naught upon l, l get cancelled 2 u naught upon n pi in bracket you rearrange this bracket term minus into minus 1 raised to n plus 1 add 1 minus minus 1 raised to n and so bn is equal to 2 u naught upon n pi bracket 1 minus minus 1 raised to n. So this is the value of bn. Now put the value of bn in equation number 6. Equation number 6 is the latest solution after condition 3. So put the value of bn in equation number 6 here. And so that you will get the solution u of x, y is equal to summation in equation number 6, the value of bn. And so the solution is u of x, y is equal to summation 2 u naught upon n pi, bracket 1 minus minus n raise to n, bracket complete into e raise to minus n pi x upon n into sine of n pi y upon n. Now 2 u naught upon pi is a constant term because n is variable inside the summation. So we can write this term outside the summation to u naught upon pi and the remaining terms inside the summation. Okay, so this is the solution for the two dimensional heat equation. Uh, like the wave equation or one dimensional heat equation, and the solution of two dimensional heat equation is on the same line. We remove the 
arbitrary constants one by one applying the conditions applying the one day conditions the same uh, way is there to find a solution of uh, wave equation one dimensional heat equation or two dimensional heat equation there is also in two dimensional heat equation up to equation number 6 we can easily write the solution because for every example of two dimensional heat equation the solution will be same as this only change is here when we apply the condition for at that time we have to find out vm and the function is different in every example that u of 0 y or u x 0 and that Hmm. Function is different, and here hmm, the value of P will be different. So here, here is the change only when we solve the half-length Fourier series. Okay, so up to equation number six, the solution will be same for two-dimensional heat equation. So, and uh, here in two-dimensional heat equation, if you are using the second solution, this then the solution will be same up to equation number six, like the example one. And if uh, uh, here y is uh, y tends to infinity, if in example y tends to infinity, then the most suitable solution will be this one in two-dimensional heat equation. So you remember, so you remember for uh, applications of three D, we have to remove only the arbitrary constants one by one using the boundary condition. That's it. So here the, we have discussed two-dimensional heat equation. For example, so there on the dimension of the equation, just go through these examples. So here, this topic two-dimensional heat equation is over here. Unit is also over here. Okay, six unit. 